today we're going to do a science experiment with the kids. I'm standing at the side of the hill here on my swale. I built a swale on a hill for my rain capture. And today we're going to talk about soil stability and uh, an engineering hack, if you want to call it that. It's just engineering on how plants hold soil and um, the implications for if you want to build retaining walls in your gardens um, or you know if you're if you do anything where you want to avoid a, a hill sliding and you want to maximize your soil stability um, this little trick most people probably won't know um, and it can save you a lot of headache it can keep your structure stable if you're building for example a, a shed on a hill this little trick can help you build a really solid foundation so that 30 years from now the shed won't wash away and slide down the hill so stay tuned, we're going to have some fun with the kids, get them outside, learning science, um, and playing around with some sand, actually. And we're going to learn tricks that uh, apply to how roots stabilize soil and why plants are so vitally important on this planet. Stick around. Okay, so uh, you guys fill this bucket with sand. So we have a blueberry bucket here. So fill it up with sand. And then as you go, just tamp it down with this, okay? We want to fill in all those air spots. And I'm going to just take a little bit. So what soil looks like, can you see this? So what soil looks like is basically a bunch of little stones of various sizes. Sand, silt, clay, they're all basically just mineral rocks of different sizes. And the only thing holding it together is actually frictional forces. Microscopically, when you look at this, it's just a bunch of rocks. So let's zoom in on that. So I have two magnified sand particles, soil particles here. And when the soil particles are all in a column, like the soil that I'm standing on, there's a normal force, a gravity force pushing down. So the, the weight of this sand particle is pushing down on this rock and it can flow in either direction. Those are called slip planes, but they have slip planes in any direction. If it has it comes in contact with another soil particle, this soil particle will resist the gravity force of this one by pushing back up. So you have extreme stability in soils when you stand and apply a force vertically on them. However, when you have a hill and the soil particles are maybe sitting at an angle, only a fraction of the the gravity force is pushing straight down, the other fraction is going perpendicular. And that's creating a shear force which slides the rocks. So when I drag something across the surface, I'm applying a force this way, and the resistive frictional force of this rock doesn't like this one sliding, so it actually pushes back this way. So the forces on this rock are like this. One going that way, one going this way. So what that looks like when you have two soil particles is that it, the resistive or the frictional forces in shear basically just pull the, the sand particles apart. And when you pull the sand particles apart like this, there's nothing to resist that force. There's nothing to resist the sand particles falling apart, so the hill just slides. So as you go from normal size force to a hill, Eventually, that shear force, the, the gravity force that's pushing down, becomes more and more of a shear force. And as the angle of the hill increases, the shear force equals the gravity force. And pushing it a little past that will cause it to slide. So what that looks like is all, all materials will have what's called an angle of repost, which means... That angle of repose means you can only pile something up so high and it'll just want to slide off. Now this sand is a little wet, but if I apply a little force downwards on it, what's going to happen is this sand is going to actually shear away and you'll see an angle break in the sand. So see this angle break? That's the shear force. So the force of this is pushing down just far enough to pull those molecules apart. This is what causes failures and slides on um, hills, 
on sheds sliding down hills, damaging the soils, soil washouts, that sort of thing. So we're gonna put this sandcastle here. And now we have a weight, this rock here. What do you think is gonna happen when I put this rock on the sandcastle? Do you think that this is going to be able to hold it? Uh, no. This? Wait? No. No? Let's see. No. Not at all. It failed very easily because the angle of the bucket is actually vertical. So there's no shear resistance. There's nothing here to keep it in place. So how can we solve that? If you guys wanted to keep this bucket up, what would you do? What do you think? What would you do if you needed to keep your sandcastle up and you needed someone to stand on it? What could you do to solve it? Maybe like a wall around it? Right? So if you put a wall around this, a retaining wall, then when this sand tries to get pulled apart like this, that wall will keep it squished back in. So that's one way to do it and everyone knows that way. That's why we build retaining walls on slopes. But I have an engineering hack for another way that we can resist that force. And it'll actually even apply to building sandcastles. So if kids build sandcastles, you can use this little engineering hack to build super tall and strong sandcastles. Kind of cool. So let's look at how we can do that. I have... Just put the bucket on top. But there's a better way. I have an old shirt we're going to cut up. And we are going to use little strips of fabric as a composite pile. So we're going to put this down. And we're going to cut little strips out of the shirt. Roughly the size of the bucket. Get six of them. Okay, so we're going to cut these out and then we'll come right back. Okay, so we cut our little circles out of the t-shirt. Now, this is not exactly strong. But would you believe me when I tell you that putting in this composite layer will actually increase the strength, the shear force resistance of the sand, you know, by a factor of 100 or 1,000 or more. Because it had essentially no resistance shear force. Those two molecules just get pulled apart. So how do we keep those two molecules from getting pulled apart? We put them on something that doesn't want to get pulled apart. So that the gravity force of the two molecules will push them into this fabric, and then the fabric will get pulled apart, but it will resist the force. Now, it's not super strong. It's actually quite bendy. I could probably pull this and rip it, but it's strong enough that it's going to have a massive impact on the soil stability. So if you zoom in here, I filled this with about an inch of sand, and we're going to just put it in layers like lasagna. So we're going to put this composite fabric like as best as we can in the bucket. It's a little hard to do it flat in there. Okay, and then we're going to put sand on it. Maybe not too much. And then now we've got a bunch of airspace in there, so we're going to tamp that airspace down. And you would do this while you're building your retaining wall, is you would just tamp down each layer as you go. Okay, do you want to do one? So try to spread it out as flat as you can while you do it. And we're just going to lasagna it like this. And this fabric's going to resist the shear force. It's going to pull that shear force, pull those molecules back together. Good, now a layer of sand. Nice good layer. Yep. 
as we stamp it down, it'll fill in. I'll tamp it. Okay, and we're gonna keep filling this up and then we'll come back to you as soon. Okay, so we refilled our bucket. We tamped it down and now the, the cloth is gonna resist as the sand wants to get pulled apart, the cloth fibers will get pulled apart and then they'll get pushed back in together um, and resist that shear force. We have them in layers like a lasagna. So when you're building your retaining wall, all this means is that as you add your soil, just add six inches, eight inches, a foot of soil and then put on some kind of cloth fabric. Uh, you can put on like an old screen door from like a, you know, like a screen door, the screen, you can put that in there anything that'll resist that uh, sideways motion and it'll give your retaining wall a ton of strength. So let's redo our experiment, this time with a composite. So it might fail a bit at the top. You can see I added a bunch of sand at the top. The top is kind of, the top layer is gonna be just like a normal sand castle. So we'll see how that goes. But we're gonna take our same old load, the stone, and now we're gonna put it on this. Last time it squished it right out. It is a thousand times stronger now. So here we are at the compost pile, just so I can show you angle of repose of what that kind of represents. When we pile the compost up and when I turn it, as I put compost on, it just tumbles down. And it tumbles down because the gravity force of the compost working down is equal to the shear force pulling it back in and as it gets a little taller the gravity force is too high to resist the shear force and the shear force just gets uh, overcome and the shear force to resist it gets overcome and the gravity force pushing it down and away from the hill the tangential gravity force overcomes the shear force to keep it in and slides down so you can see for this compost, which is a mix of a whole bunch of different things, that this is the approximate angle of repose of this hill. Now if we imagine that this hill is zoomed out and this is a mountain, we get landslides down a mountain when we cut all the trees down. And the reason why we do that, why that happens, is because when we cut the trees down and the roots die back, those roots were acting like the fabric. They were connecting everything under, underground and forming a web that was resisting the shear force of the material falling down. So roots in a hill are extremely important. They're like um, when, you, when you get a whole entire hill planted out to trees and thick grasses and deep tap-rooted wild grasses and wild weeds with deep tap roots and very extensive root systems, that all holds the hill together, not like sheets of um, fabric, but as a web of fabric that resists against every single possible slip plane. So that's why planting on hills is so important and why cutting down trees and deforesting our land, especially on hills, can cause landslides and washouts, especially when the rain falls and that soil and all the particles um, get wet and lubricated they slide past each other and uh, they'll just slide and the whole entire hill will wash out. So if you create stuff like a swale that I'll take you to, my swale, this is my rain catchment swale. When I cut the sumacs down, you know, I know it's maybe a bit ugly, but I left some up, you know, all, all here I let some grow back. And even on the swale itself, on the swale proper, I coppiced or I pollarded them, which means I cut them shoulder height. And you can see actually, it will go down to, they started suckering down the bottom. So the whole entire thing is, is alive still, even though this a couple of those root uh, trunks are dead. But you'll see actually that they started sprouting up. You know, this guy specifically is still alive, fully alive. The reason why I did that wasn't just to feed the soil, but to keep the intensive root system on this hill alive and well and holding the hill together. 
because when this swale fills up after a rain event, it will fill right up and the water will soak down and into the tree systems. And if I don't have roots in that soil to hold it all together, then I could wash this whole hill out. But with plants on the soil, and you can see it's very thick, lush vegetation that I've kept. You know, a lot of this is goldenrod, um, sumac suckering coming up. So these are sumac suckering coming up, which is fine because that's food for deer. They love the new suckers, but more importantly is that the root system is alive. I can cut them and harvest them um, in patches and rotationally harvest them to build soil up. But more importantly, I'm keeping a root system in place at least until what I plant on the swale grows up and becomes established and those roots will hold it in place. You know, when this Barton nut tree grows up, its root systems will be vast and extensive in here. It's got a service berry next to it. It's got tons of herbs planted all around it. We've got hazelnuts next to it. All these plants will tie this whole berm together and prevent washouts. And it does it in the same way that the fabric does. So just a little quick video on how you can use some engineering hacks to create greater soil stability, uh, create stronger structures, stronger soil to support the structures. And if you're, if you're cutting out hills to put gardens on hills and using retaining walls, consider throwing in the odd layer of an old screen, uh, old landscaping, weed block fabric, even old t-shirts and bed sheets. They'll all hold that soil together and keep it super strong and keep your retaining wall from failing. In fact, in highways they do this, they do this engineering to hold back um, the, the roads from falling apart on highways and then they put that you know retaining wall up with the, the tiled the tiled retaining wall. That tiled retaining wall is actually more just so that the soil doesn't get exposed. It doesn't hold much of the load. Most of the load is actually held in the composite material in between the layers of dirt. And it's that composite material that's holding that hill together, not the retaining wall. And that's why those things are engineered very well and they don't fail. So I hope you learned something that you can use on your own property. And I'll see you next time.